Hey there, Essential Church. Uh, thank you so much for joining us online for Online Church today. My name is Pastor Byron Manning. I am the student pastor here, uh, and I just have the privilege and the honor of bringing the word to you today. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you haven't been able to tune in with us these past weeks or attend in person, just to give you kind of a, a feeler of where we're at, we have been uh, discussing a four-part series called Say Yes. And I just, I'm just closing it out today. I get the honor of closing it out. And you know, just to reiterate, our prayer behind this Say Yes series is that you would say yes to the call that God has on your life and for the work that he has planned for your life. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at a man in the Bible whose whole life and whole ministry was about saying yes to God. And if you, have, if you haven't guessed it already, yes, I am talking about Jesus. You know, my, my message title today is I Believe in Jesus. I Believe in Jesus. In Jesus. We're going to be looking at John chapter 6 today. And if you're any, any bit familiar with the, with the scriptures, uh, John chapter 6, there's a famous miracle that happens in this passage of scripture. Jesus feeds uh, 5,000. You know, that is, the, that is the story title. But actually what scholars believe is that it says there was only 5,000 men, not including the women and children. So they're guesstimating that anywhere between 18 and 20,000 people were present at this miracle. So I'm actually going to be looking at what the conversation that happens after Jesus, you know, ha- does this miracle, the, the conversation that Jesus has with people after, uh, you know, but we're just going to be looking at John and I just absolutely love the book of John. You know, I love the gospels. I'm kind of like uh, a Jesus guy, you know, Jesus saved my life and I just love Jesus. Um, but I just love reading all the gospels, how they present Jesus in a different light. You know, Matthew, the theme of Matthew and the whole goal of Matthew is to present Jesus as the king uh, of the Jews. You know, you have Mark whose theme was Jesus's life, the sacrifice and service of Jesus's ministry. You have Luke uh, that portrays Jesus uh, in his humanity as the son of man. And then you have John that, that, that shows Jesus uh, in his deity as the son of of God. So we're going to be looking at John. You know, I love how straight to the point John is. He is like, it is like reading an action movie. You jump right into the miracles of Jesus right here in John. You know, he is like so straight to the point that he skips baby Jesus and jumps right into the ministry, into the action. Uh, so someone that appreciates being short, sweet to the point, I love the gospel of John. So picking up in John 6, verses 26, Jesus is having a conversation with the multitude after he has just fed them, miraculously multiplied bread, and fed over, over 18 to 20,000 people. It's amazing. And so we pick up this conversation here. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in me who he sent. Therefore, they said to him, What sign will you perform then? that we may see it and we may believe you. What work are you going to do, Jesus? And I'm just so glad that I'm not Jesus because I would have probably blown a gasket right here. I would not have answered gracefully. I would have been sarcastic. I really, what do you mean? Like, what work am I going to do? I just fed you, you know? But Jesus, I just love his responses, how graceful he is, how full of love uh, he is. They continue to ask him, hey, look, our fathers, have, have, they ate the manna in the desert. You know, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, most surely I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to us, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, 
I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that you are just, you're able to touch each and every single person that is watching this, whether you're watching it live or whether you are watching it, uh, you know, just watching it back. Lord, I know that you can speak to us wherever we are at. Uh, I pray that the word today would be sown on good soil. Lord, I pray that, I just know that your word says that it won't return empty or void. So I pray for just a manifestation of your word in our lives. Speak to us uh, and just give us grace today. And in Jesus' mighty name, amen. You know, I don't, I don't know about you, but I am somebody that loves to eat. I just love to eat. I specifically love this passage because we are talking about food. Jesus fed uh, just a ton of people. I mean, so for me, if you want to get me somewhere, you just tell me free food and I'll be there. Uh, you know, I just love to eat, especially bread, man. I just love to eat bread. Like snacking on bread and butter is just so good, especially whenever you go to a restaurant and get some of that fresh restaurant bread, get some of that good restaurant butter. Uh, and I actually did that just the other week. I uh, went to a very particular restaurant, uh, which will remain nameless. And I really didn't have that good of an experience, actually. Uh, I walked in, and it was about an hour and a half before close. Me and, me and a person, we were, we were together going to, just going to eat. And we went through this. We got sat. We didn't have that great of service, actually. Uh, our waiter was kind of short with us, didn't really seem to care. Like, I just constantly, you know, was having to ask for refill or just ask for things or go find my waiter. I just did not have a good experience. And every single time this waiter would come back to my table, there was always an attitude. You know, once again, I'm not going to say the name of this restaurant because, you know, I just don't want to put any restaurant down. Uh, but... You know, had an appetizer, ate that, it was good. The bread was fantastic. Uh, the, the entree was okay, but really it came to the part that I was excited for, which is dessert. I don't know, like, if it's just me, but I could eat dessert for every meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, I could eat dessert. You know, I just love dessert. And I came to this restaurant for a very specific kind of dessert. You know, so the waiter comes up to me, after we finish our meal and ask us, hey, did you make room for dessert? I mean, that is the magic question. That is music to my ears. Did you make room for dessert? And I said, absolutely. Give me just a second. I'm looking through the menu. So I continued to look through the menu and the waiter came back and I said, hey, I want this. And wh what I was ordering was like a triple fudge Oreo crusted cheesecake, you know, and for the restaurant that I was at, that's not a very unusual or like, it's not unusual to order something like that. So a couple minutes go by, I see my waiter start to approach out the corner of my eye. I'm like, all right, here's my, here's my cheesecake. Let's go. I'm ready for this. And the waiter came and, you know, they're 30 minutes before close. And the waiter said, hey, sorry, we don't have that. It's, it's frozen. I was like, what do you mean it's frozen? Like, they're like, yeah, for the night. We put it up for the night. I was like, what, what time is it? Like, y'all are close for 30 more minutes. I was like, okay, like, no worries. This was an internal conversation. But on the ex externally, I just said, hey, don't worry about it. Not a problem. So I was like, I will take this kind of cheesecake. And then they come back and it's like, hey, that one is frozen too. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, dude, you, you asked me for dessert. I didn't, you... You came up to me and asked me if I wanted dessert. Now I tell you, like, come on. Is all your cheesecake frozen? Like, why can't I have cheesecake? It is literally in your name. Cheesecake is in your name. Like, it's, you would think it's like they'd have like a warehouse of cheesecake in the back. Or like a factory, you know, a factory of cheesecake. But in the whole time, like, I was just like, I was like, hey, I finally, got, I finally got a cheesecake. Like on my third attempt, I got the cheese, I got a cheesecake. You know, I didn't get my first pick, didn't get my second pick. I had to settle for the third. That's okay, it was still really good. Uh, but that one was, fro like it felt frozen and cold too. I think they really just started to feel, they started to feel bad. And I was like, hey, look, we, I, can't, I can't go back and tell them their third choice is frozen, like just thawed out or something. So it was good, it was all right. We left, 
uh, the thing. But like the whole time, the waiter just like did not seem like he really wanted to serve us, you know. And I just left there kind of thinking like, maybe he like missed the point, you know. I think he just missed the point of, of me being here. You know, like, you do work this job, right? Like, you don't become a server to not serve people. You know, you just kind of missed the point. Uh, and this is kind of where we find uh, the perspective of the audience that Jesus is speaking to uh, in this story in John chapter 6. Jesus says in verse 26, he said, Most surely I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Now, this miracle, you know, that Jesus is talking about, the feeding, the, the, the 5,000, worst case scenario, this is like a really big deal. Like Jesus took five loaves of bread and somehow managed to feed Five, like 18 to 20,000 people with it. Worst case scenario, this is really cool. I want Jesus at my party because it seems like wherever he goes, stuff be multiplying, you know? But Jesus kind of tells the people here, hey, you think this was just about bread. You think this was just about, you know, me actually feeding you. He's telling them, hey, you're missing the point. You're missing the point of what happened with this miracle. You know, this miracle is a foreshadowing of Jesus' body being broken on the cross. This is literally a foreshadowing of the greatest miracle that is to come. You know, the miracle of forgiveness, the miracle of Jesus' body hanging on the cross, Jesus, Jesus dying for our sins, this is the miracle, and they're just totally missing it out in left field. And Jesus tell, is telling them, hey, look, you are missing the point. So I just want to remind us today, don't miss the point of your relationship with Jesus. Don't miss the point. Sometimes you got to remind yourself why. You know, I am a person that likes to know why. You know, and, and I find ourselves, like, especially, uh, I find church and Christians sometimes, they forget their why. They forget why it is, you know, that, that we come to church. We, we forget why it is, it's in, why we're supposed to love one another. You know, we're missing, sometimes we just get distracted and we miss the spiritual aspect, the spiritual focus, the spiritual importance of why we get to live this Christian life, you know. I'm sure that Jesus is giving this big, long speech to this multitude and to these followers, and they're like, Jesus, what are you talking about, man? Jesus is like, hey, look, you didn't see the sign. You didn't see the miracle. You, didn't, you saw me multiply bread, but you didn't see the miracle in this. You didn't see the sign. You just, you, you ate, and you were filled, and you thought that was really cool, but you're missing the point, and I'm sure they're asking Jesus, Jesus, dude, are you missing the point? Is Jesus missing the point, you know? Or are we? A lot of times, we, confu we can confuse the order uh, of Jesus' miracles sometimes. We can confuse the order in which things happen. You know, let me just let you in on a, a little secret or a perspective of Jesus, you know. Jesus uh, always does things in the spirit first. There is always a spiritual attachment or a spiritual establishment uh, it, it, before his miracles. You know, look at any miracle. There is a spiritual significance, and then there is always a manifestation uh, in the physical or in the tangible in this case, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus is foreshadowing the miracle of forgiveness. And then there is a tangible, just so that, it, because he's always willing to demonstrate that he has, that he has spiritual authority as he does physical authority. You know, everything that Jesus does comes from a spiritual 
establishment. So he foreshadows, he's saying, look, this is my body that's going to be broken. My body, this bread, this is going, this is the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Those who eat of me will never hunger again. It will satisfy the hole in their heart, the thing that people are longing for, the thing that people are missing. It says, this is the significance of this miracle. And just to demonstrate that I can do it, I'm also going to feed all of you with bread. At the end of the day, we've got to shift our perspective as Christians, as a church, to not being physical beings that have spiritual encounters with this God that we can't see, but flipping the script and believing that we are spiritual beings that have physical day-to-day encounters. You know, we are spiritual beings, and in order to be uh, to exercise and walk in that spirit, man, we have to feed ourselves daily, man. You got to feed daily in your life and in your walk with Jesus. You know, Jesus is not just talking about, uh, he didn't just feed these people just for the heck of feeding them physically and satisfying their hunger. He used it to make a point. He used it to say, hey, look, I'm the bread of life. If you can be, you're going to eat of this and you're going to be hungry again, but whenever you eat, of me, whenever you taste what I have to offer, you will be satisfied and you will never hunger again. You know, as Christians, it is important that you feed yourself daily. What does that look like? Man, that looks like being in the word of God daily, being in prayer daily. Uh, I don't know like about you, but I've got a pretty like regular eating habit of making sure that I eat daily. I'm going to at least get three, three, four meals in, maybe six or seven, you know, who knows, depending on the day. But I'm going to make sure that I eat daily. And you have to eat in order to grow. You know, and the same is true in your spiritual walk. You have to eat in order to grow. But the thing about the spirit is that, you know, physically, whenever I get hungry, I eat. Whenever I'm hungry, I say, hey, like, I need to eat something. But, the, but in the spiritual realm, it is actually quite the opposite. In the spirit, you get hungry because you eat. Have you ever tried to go on a diet and kick fast food? And, you know, you just start to eat healthy things. And for the first week, it kind of sucks. But then... After that, you're like, oh, man, this actually ain't half bad. Like, this is kind of refreshing. This is kind of good. And then you go back to eating something bad. You are changing your body's uh, taste and palate for the right thing. And the same is true in the spirit. Sometimes uh, you, have, you have to eat in order to be hungry. And the more you eat, the more you eat, the more you devour this word, the more you get in the presence of God, the hungrier and hungrier you get. I mean, just try it out. I'll tell you from testament in my life that at my hungriest moments where I'm hungry for God to do something are, are days that I spend in the Word or, or days that I spend, I spend extended time in prayer. In the physical, you eat because you're hungry, but in the spiritual, you get hungry because you're, you eat. You know, and... Hey, look, where does it, Byron, Byron, where does it say that? If you look in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter begins to say, hey, you have got to crave the purity of the word, and you've got to put off the things, uh, that the, the things of this world, you've got to put off sin. And he says that as you put off sin, you will crave the purity of the word. As you cut things out of your life, as you rid yourself of evil things, you will crave the purity of the word. As you eat, you are going to get hungry. What you feed on, you hunger for. So I ask you, what are you feeding on? What are you feeding yourself? Are you feeding yourself the news and, and the fear that, that every social media outlet is portraying or every news outlet is speaking to you about? You know, be fearful, be careful, be careful. Now, I'm all for being cautious, but God commands us not to live in a spirit of fear. What you feed on, you hunger for. 
Or are you going to be the person that, you know, look, I know that there are, there, there are uh, things I need to be cautious about, but let me just tell every situation what the Word of God says. Let's, say, let's look at what my Bible says. And what you feed on, you hunger for. And just bringing me down to my last point, you know, the, at the end of the day, Jesus said yes. Jesus said yes. In John chapter 7, a chapter later, Jesus is addressing another crowd, and he says, he says, I, you know, I don't come on to do the will of, of myself. I come to do the will of my Father. He said, I'm not, I'm not here to do the things that I will. I'm here to do the things that my Father will. Jesus said yes. And at the end of the day, he he said yes to the biggest thing, to the biggest burden, to the biggest mission, to the reason, the very purpose that he was here on this earth. He said yes to, which was going to the cross and dying a sinner's death for our sins. You know, they asked Jesus, what work will he do? The crowd did. They said, Jesus, what work are you going to do for us? Little did they know that Jesus was foreshadowing the greatest miracle, the miracle of forgiveness, the miracle of his body being broken, the, mod- the miracle of his body being torn, the miracle of his death, his resurrection. That's the true miracle in this story. The true miracle in Jesus feeding the 5,000 is not the fact that he took some kids' lunch, and was able to multiply it. The miracle is the foreshadowing of taking the weight of, of the sin of the world and dying with it and paying for it with, with his life. But not just staying dead. Because the Jesus that I believe didn't just die on the cross. The Jesus I believe in actually resurrected from the grave. The Jesus that I believe in uh, came back. That's the Jesus that I believe in. So I leave you with this question today. What is Jesus calling you to say yes to? What is Jesus calling you to say yes to? I don't know if it's you know, a call to step out in faith in the workplace, whether it's a call to step out and minister to a friend or whether it's a business decision, you know, whatever it is, I just believe that uh, there is always great blessing whenever there is obedience to the call of God on your life. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you so much that, Jesus, you died and resurrected for us. You died and resurrected to set us free. You are our Savior. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the King of the ages, Jesus. I just thank you for your authority and dominance. Lord, I pray that if you're speaking to anybody's heart right now, maybe you haven't made the decision to follow Jesus, or maybe you haven't made the decision to say yes to Jesus. God, I pray that you would just uh, let there just be a stirring on their spirit and on their heart right now, that they would say yes to you. Lord, and in the, in the people that you're speaking to, the people that we're, you're calling to take a step out of faith, Lord, I pray that you would just give them confidence, give them courage, give them favor, give them blessing. And most of all, Jesus, we just thank you. We just thank you. We just, we, just, we just glorify your name. And in Jesus' name, amen.